Welcome to Hard Talk with me and again. Welcome to Hard Talk on the BBC World Service with me, Stephen Sacker. My guest today swapped an academic career in the law for a high-profile government position and is now feeling more political heat than he could possibly have bargained for some three years ago. Gideon Timoteos was appointed Attorney General by Ethiopia's Nobel Peace Prize winning Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. At the time, the Ethiopian government was making much of its commitment to modernization and national reconciliation. Today, that agenda seems to have been overtaken by events. Notably, an intensifying internal conflict in the north of the country which could, if not halted, threaten the very unity of the country. Last November, the Ethiopian army moved into the northern region of Tigray to remove the regional government led by the Tigray People's Liberation Front, the movement which dominated the national government for decades before the current PM came to power. The result? A bitter conflict in Tigray, which has now spilled into the neighbouring regions of Amhara and Afar, and it's drawn in forces from neighbouring Eritrea in support of the Addis government. Thousands have been killed, there's disturbing evidence of atrocities committed on both sides, and the fighting has left hundreds of thousands facing the very real threat of famine. A couple of years ago, the Ethiopian government was basking in the warmth of international approval. Now its handling of this internal conflict is prompting accusations and condemnation. What went wrong? Well, Gedeon Timoteos joins me now from Addis Ababa. Welcome to Hard Talk. Thanks for having me. Now, when we last spoke to each other uh, nearly nine months ago, you seemed very confident that your government was about to crush the forces of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Are you now prepared to say that your government strategy has gone disastrously wrong? Uh, Mr. Sacker, as I have stated back then, uh, we are in a position to retake Makali and we are able to finalize the initial phase of the operation within a matter of three weeks. Uh, we took over Makali, we established an interim administration, we invested on rehabilitating Tigray. And remember, it was a conflict that was forced upon us. It was not a conflict that we got into by our own volition and willingness. So that's how we see uh, the situation. Well, you haven't answered my question because since then, and of course your forces did take Makele, since then things have gone very wrong. Your forces left Makele in June and since then the TPLF, the Tigrayan rebel forces, have retaken much of Tigray from your national army, but they've also moved into the neighboring regions of Amhara and Afar. They hold much more territory now. So what's gone wrong? When we are holding Makale and when our forces were in Tigray, there are constant issues that were being raised about humanitarian access, the humanitarian situation. We wanted to improve the humanitarian situation. And we're also concerned by the fact that the TPLF was sending wave after wave of civilians against our troops, there was an extensive use of child soldiers by the TPLF. So under these circumstances, to mitigate and minimize the humanitarian cost and suffering, we did the responsible thing. We declared a unilateral ceasefire and we withdrew our troops from Makale. Unfortunately, uh, the TPLF continued with its aggression and belligerence and escalated the conflict. It expanded it into Afar and Amara regional state, uh, committing gross atrocities against civilians. We'll get to the allegations of gross atrocities in a minute, but you tell me that you were concerned about the humanitarian situation. It's very hard for me to understand then why to this very day you and your government are maintaining a siege, a, a blockade of Tigray, which involves cutting off electricity, telecommunications, banking and financial services, something which the UN and other aid agencies say is materially affecting hundreds of thousands, millions of people. When we declared the humanitarian unilateral ceasefire, we established humanitarian corridor through Afar. It was the TPLF, the terrorist TPLF, that expanded the conflict and turned this corridor into a conflict zone. 
Why don't you end the blockade, Mr. Attorney General? Uh, as I said, we have facilitated humanitarian access and corridor through AFAR. Now, as far as electricity and other essential services are concerned, the utility companies, the corporations that provide these services, they had their, several of their personnel killed in Tigray while they're trying to repair basic infrastructure. They have been subject to attacks. So under the existing insecurity, with the continued aggression of the TPLF, it would be difficult for these corporations to send their personnel, their employees in Tigray. So had the TPLF reciprocated the unilateral ceasefire, then it would have been a different circumstance. Well, but of course, the, the, as far as the Tigrayans are concerned, and I did speak to a Tigrayan <laughs> spokesman very recently, uh, you'll know that they believe that there is no way they can end their armed struggle until you end the blockade. And there's no sign of it ending. There are also worrying signs that your government sees the, the international aid agencies, the NGOs that are trying to deliver help to hundreds of thousands of people who are facing famine in Tigray, you appear to see them as part of the problem. One government spokesman, Redwan Hussein, recently referred to aid groups as playing a destructive role. What is that supposed to mean? That's only a reference to a very small minority of organizations. The overwhelming majority of aid organizations are providing aid and assistance to those in need. Uh, we are cooperating with them. Uh, we facilitate their work. So we don't have a problem with that. And as I noted earlier, when we declared the unilateral ceasefire, our objective, our intent was for humanitarian aid to reach the people in Tigray uh, without any hindrance. That's why we established the corridors so far. We allowed humanitarian flights to take off from Addis and fly to Makali, but the continued aggression from the side of the TPLF has created a situation on the ground that is making things more and more complicated. I think people watching and listening to this conversation are going to find it hard to understand that while hundreds of thousands of people in the north of your country are facing the imminent threat of famine, hundreds of thousands have been displaced, are currently living in camps. You, in your government, have suspended the operations of various aid organizations, including Médecins Sans Frontières Holland branch, and also the Norwegian Refugee Council. Why on earth have you done that? You have to understand that all the organizations that provide assistance and aid that operate in our territory have to respect our rules and regulations. As I have mentioned earlier, the overwhelming majority of humanitarian organizations have no problem with this and they continue to provide assistance and aid. These organizations are trying to keep people alive and you're stopping them operating. That's not the case. There has been administrative measures, but these measures are to ensure compliance with the appropriate regulations. As I have stated earlier, several organizations, numbering in the hundreds, are operating all over the country, providing assistance for those in need. We don't have a problem with them. We are working with them. We have a very constructive relationship. And we are also in consultation, in dialogue with these entities you have mentioned. And we believe that they will be able to rectify the violations very soon and will be able to reinstate their license. You are Ethiopia's Attorney General. Have you read the report from the University of Ghent in Belgium that went forensically through lists of people, named individuals, civilians who have been killed in the fighting in Tigray? They have come up with 2,562 civilians who died in 232 incidents which the University of Ghent researchers are calling massacres in Tigray over the last several months. Have you read that report and what have you done about it? We take all such allegations, all such reports seriously. We look into it. We conduct investigations. We are committed to ensuring accountability. The government of Ethiopia does not condone any such violations. And as we have tried to communicate to the public at large previously, we have conducted several investigations. There are additional investigations that are underway, uh, both through the civilian and military tracks. And whenever we identify perpetrators, 
uh, to the extent we find these kind of reports credible, uh, we take measures to ensure accountability. Amnesty International have released a report this month, again, using more than 60 testimonies from eyewitnesses, which they say provides overwhelming evidence of systematic sexual abuse, rape, and other terrible forms of sexual abuse carried out by Ethiopian army forces in Tigray since the beginning of this conflict. When you talk about justice and accountability, what have you done about that. We are conducting and we have conducted investigations. We have several of our own soldiers responsible. Many have been court-martialed. There are ongoing investigations. These are things we take seriously. We don't condone this kind of behavior. We don't tolerate uh, this kind of human rights violations. But I must also point out that some of these reports you have mentioned, and there is a tendency to sensationalize. There is a tendency to draw very sweeping conclusions that are not supported by the extent and scope of the investigation. Some of them have also adapted methodologies that we think are rather flawed. Be that as it may, as I have said earlier, both through a civilian track and a military track, we have conducted investigations. I find it hard to believe your government is taking these allegations seriously when one of your own spokespeople described the Amnesty International report as nothing more than sensationalized attacks and smears. If you were serious about these terrible allegations which involve accusations of victims being held in captivity for days and being systematically raped, some being handed over for sexual slavery, some being raped in front of their children. If you took these accusations seriously, you would have dozens and dozens of members of your armed forces behind bars right now. As I've said, these kind of matters are matters we take seriously. Yes, there could be sensationalized reports, and there are sensationalized reports drawing very exaggerated and unsubstantiated uh, conclusions, but uh, we take the victim seriously. We have conducted investigations, and more than dozens of our own soldiers have been sentenced to serious, serious uh, penalties, some including to life in prison. How so, many? Uh, more than 30. Uh, and so our, our action speaks for itself. And in addition to this, I want to point out that the Ethiopian Armed Forces, are, the Ethiopian National Defense Force is a disciplined fighting force. It is a force that has a long track record of serving within the UN framework, going back as far as the Korean War and in several parts of the continent. Its reputation for discipline, for integrity, is there for all to see. I, I'm there sorry, might... Mr. Attorney General, but if you're telling me more than 30 soldiers have been convicted of the most serious sexual crimes in the course of this conflict over the last few months, there is clearly something much deeper going on. How many senior commanders of the Ethiopian military have been fired and held to account for what their men are doing? Because this isn't just a one-off, this is systematic. If you read the Amnesty International report, that is quite plain. We don't agree with their conclusion that this was uh, systematic. They have conducted their report, their investigation remotely. They have relied on what they call community workers. We are very skeptical of who those community workers might be. We conduct our investigations on the ground. And as far as accountability is concerned, our commitment, our seriousness, has also been demonstrated by the fact that we have allowed the UN High Commission for Human Rights to conduct a joint investigation with the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. Only a government that is transparent, that is committed to the highest standards and values, would permit this kind of scrutiny. Attorney General, you're right to point to this uh, joint investigation and the UN Human Rights Commissioner is involved. She says she takes the Amnesty International report very seriously. But, but there's another very profound problem here. You're the Attorney General of Ethiopia. Some of these allegations of the mo most extreme sexual violence come as allegations directed to Eritrean troops operating at the invitation of your government on your territory. You have no ability to deliver justice and accountability for the crimes committed by Eritrean troops, do you?
regardless of who the perpetrators might be, our responsibility and our position is that we conduct investigations, we establish the facts. If there are individuals who are beyond our jurisdiction, there are established protocols and procedures to seek international legal cooperation, to work in collaboration with the authorities that have jurisdiction in neighboring countries. So this is a process that is underway. We work with neighboring countries on these kind of issues. So I think it's too early to jump to conclusions. And I would say that based on our actions and our conduct so far, our commitment to accountability is very clear. I must also point out that we are rather disappointed and a bit dismayed by the fact that several atrocities that are being committed by the terrorist TPLF against civilians, including children, is not being denounced, it's not being looked into by international human rights organizations. If you had watched my interview with the spokesman for the TPLF, you will know that I went into great yes, detail. I, 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 do, I would like to acknowledge that and I do recognize that. Thank you. It's important that we challenge both sides in this conflict. Let's get back to your side. Let's get back to the language being used by your own Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, who just last month used these words to describe uh, the Tigray People's Liberation Front. He described them as a cancer, as weeds, as a disease. He said that these weeds will be removed from our country. As Attorney General, in a climate where there are accusations of ethnic cleansing, war crimes, crimes against humanity, what do you think of the language being used by your own Prime Minister? The statement issued by the Office of the Prime Minister was referring to a terrorist organization. There have been instances in the past in which notable world leaders have used similar language to refer to terrorist organizations like ISIS. You know, given the pain and agony that the TPLF is causing to the people of Ethiopia, not just the recent massacres and atrocities it has committed, but what has transpired over the past three decades, uh, that is a sentiment that most Ethiopians share. The problem is that what we see happening in, in the country is that, for example, in Addis Ababa, it's quite plain over the last couple of months, hundreds of ethnic Tigrayan people have been rounded up and detained by your security forces. We see in reaction the American USAID chief, Samantha Power, saying dehumanizing rhetoric hardens tensions and can historically accompany ethnically motivated atrocities. Do you understand why the international community is increasingly concerned by what they see and hear coming from your government? The TPLF has legitimately been designated as a terrorist organization by our parliament. Anyone who supports uh, provide material assistance or sponsors this kind of organization would have to be held accountable. The TPLF happens to be an organization organized along ethnic lines. So most of its supporters, most of its operatives or financers happen to be, not all of them, but most of them happen to be from one ethnic group. So sometimes some outsiders might not understand this context, this situation and the challenge we face. So I understand where they are coming from, but they also have to understand the environment within which we are operating. What do you uh, think are the prospects for the continued unity of your country? The, the leader of the TPLF uh, said not long ago, Mr. Gebri Michael, he said, trust has broken completely. And if they don't want us, referring to you in the Addis government, if they don't want us, why should we stay? There is a real risk of your country, your country falling apart, isn't there? It's not falling apart. You have to remember, this is a very ancient and very resilient nation. Uh, we have overcome all sorts of challenge in our long history. When we come united, when we are determined, and I believe we are, there is a determination and resolve to neutralize the threat we face from the TPLF, we can overcome this challenge. The TPLF seems to be intent on either destroying Ethiopia, it, it doesn't seem to be willing to tolerate an Ethiopia that it can't dominate, that it can't rule. And 
it's think objective it, of either uh, yeah. reasserting hegemony or dismembering Ethiopia. These are not objectives acceptable to the people of Ethiopia. There, there really doesn't seem to be a unified position now amongst all of the people of all of Ethiopia. I'm just very mindful of what Abiy Ahmed said when he won that Nobel Peace Prize back in December 2019. He said, before we can harvest peace dividends, we must plant seeds of love, forgi forgiveness and reconciliation in the hearts and minds of our citizens. Very far from love, forgiveness and reconciliation, your government right now seems intent on crushing the Tigrayan rebels, eliminating the so-called cancer, and that doesn't sound like love, reconciliation and forgiveness. We have practiced forgiveness, we have practiced uh, reconciliation. I mean, when the new administration came to power, uh, the sins and transgressions of the TPLF were forgiven. The TPLF was given an opportunity to be part of the body politic of uh, the Ethiopian state, despite the gross and systematic uh, human rights violations and misrule. Uh, there are repeated efforts on the part of this government to find amicable solutions for the differences we had with the TPLF. It is the TPLF that triggered the conflict. It is the TPLF that dragged us into this uh, conflict. You have to remember that this is not a conflict that we chose. It is a conflict that has been imposed upon us when the TPLF attacked the Northern Command. But there is no military solution, is there, Mr. Attorney General? In the end, this will have to be resolved through dialogue and compromise. And right now, your government isn't talking the language of dialogue and compromise. When we declared a unilateral uh, ceasefire, we're giving uh, peace a chance. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, your Prime Minister just told the nation that all able-bodied civilians should f f join the fight to crush the Tigrayan rebels. That's not a ceasefire. When we declared the unilateral ceasefire, uh, the TPLF, instead of reciprocating that unilateral ceasefire, expanded the conflict. Uh, it went on the offensive uh, into Afar, into the Amara regional state. It displaced hundreds of thousands. It killed hundreds of civilians. Under these circumstances, what are we expected to do? The TPLF as a terrorist organization with its continued belligerence and aggression made the ceasefire untenable. Under these circumstances, we have a right and responsibility to defend uh, our population and that's what we're doing. Gedeon Timoteos, we have to end there, but I thank you very much indeed for joining me from Addis Ababa.